I know a lot of you struggle with choosing the right type of knit material for your projects. They're not all the same, they don't all look the same or behave the same. They're quite different actually. And I'm gonna be showing you a whole bunch of different types of knit fabrics and just discussing why I would use them or not for a dress that has a nice fitted bodice. It'll be super practical and helpful. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have a really practical video for you about fabrics. This is coming from all the questions I receive in the comment section of a lot of the videos that I make. Most commonly when I sew dresses, that are designed for neat fabrics, fitted designs. I really get a lot of questions about how do I know what type of material. The most common question though is can I make it in a woven fabric? By woven fabric I mean the type that will not stretch at all. It's just fabric that is weaved in a different way than knits are. And I would say for a dress that has a fitted bodice definitely it won't work. So that is my really easy answer there. A bodice that's fitted, that's designed for knits, is just not gonna work with a woven fabric, even if you size up. Today is all in the context of a fit and flare dress, a dress designed for knit fabrics, has a bodice usually hitting the waist where the bodice is fitted, where you will have maybe negative ease at the bust or maybe zero ease at the bust, and you have a fitted waist as well. And then some type of skirt added. There are other designs, of course, for knit fabrics that the styles are loose, there's positive ease, you know, the, there's different styles around. In that case, I think you have more options in the types of neat materials, but definitely you'll see in fabric recommendations, you'll find that there's a minimum requirement for your fabric to stretch to. So if you place your fabric against four inches, for example, and you can stretch it easily and it goes up to five, that's 25%. And I think that's the bare minimum that you need for your fabric to stretch if you have a fitted bodice. You also need your fabric to stretch lengthwise. You know, if it doesn't, sure it would stretch this way and you might be able to fit it over your body, but when fabric stretches that way, it just becomes shorter when it doesn't have vertical stretch. So you might end up with a really short bodice a really uncomfortable armhole. Usually these armholes and sleeves are nice and fitted also. So you definitely, definitely need the fabric to have give vertically. Maybe not the full 25%. If you can measure at least 15% vertically, you'll be okay. If you have zero stretch on your fabric, it will definitely not work. I'll be referencing a dress pattern that I've used as examples. I'll show you two finished dresses towards the end, so stay tuned. And this is the Olympia dress from Love Notions. This is a pattern that fits perfectly what I'm talking about. You can see the line out here, it has a fitted bodice. It has a seam that finishes at the waist, both in the front and the back. The Olympia dress is the Feature Friday pattern for today. And it's been re-released, it's been retested, re-updated. It is the Feature Friday pattern for today, Friday. It's only $5, that's 60% off, I believe. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you can get it with a discount of $3. So the regular price is $12.50. It will be marked down to $9.50. So you can still get it discounted during the rest of the weekend, only a smaller discount than today, Friday. So it's a nice day to get it. And you can find my affiliate link down below in the description box and also in the pinned comments. Remember to use my code Karina10 when you make your purchases so you can get an extra 10% off on top of the sale price. And that is always good, right? It now includes up to sizes 5X. And this is a pattern that has individual cup sizes from A through double D. So that's really helpful so you can get a good fit at the bust. If you want a lot of information about the Olympia dress, I'm over at the Love Notions YouTube channel today. I have filmed it in exactly this place. I've used my exact same format. I've got a really nice detailed review there and also a really nice detailed sewing technique tutorial video for all this neckline. It's got a reverse shore collar, very beautiful V neckline. So if you look at the liner and the technique intimidates you a little bit, there's no need to worry because you'll be able to follow along and do it for sure. It's very detailed, very up close footage. Same teaching style you see here on my channel. It's just that I've made this video for Love Notions YouTube channel. So find me over there for more. But in this one, I just wanna focus a little bit more about fabric. When I do pattern reviews, I only talk about fabric choices for maybe one or two minutes but I think I could go in deeper and this information could be useful, not just for the Olympia dress, but any neat style dress that you see that has a fitted bodice and you can't really make up your mind what fabrics to choose. 
on my lap I have a pile of different types of neat fabrics that I would use hands down, eyes closed, and I know the result would be amazing. So I hope this helps you. When I show you the fabrics, I'll be putting here somewhere on the screen the type of material I'm talking about so you have a good reference. Now all these neat fabrics that I'm going to show you are made out of different types of compositions. They're usually a blend of fibers and you'll see rayon, polyamide, polyester. You'll see a lot of different types of materials in there. But one that is really, really common and that you need to see in your fabric for it to work for a fitted bodice is a, comp is a component called lycra. It could also be called elastane. It could also be called spandex. It is actually the same thing. It's a type of elastic fiber because it's not a fiber that is weaved into the main fabric and allows that fabric to stretch and then spring back to recovery. Now not every knit fabric will stretch and then spring back. It just depends on the amount of elastane that you find in there. For me, for a fitted bodice, something that needs to be close to you and stretch and then come back to its original shape, the minimum amount you need is 5% elastane, lycra or spandex in there. You might find some neat materials that just have two or three percent. I think those run the risk over time of stretching and just staying stretched and deformed and not come back to their shape. So when you purchase fabric, just look at that. Just look at the percentage because it's always listed. It could be five, it could be eight, it could be ten. I think ten is amazing, but I think the minimum at least needs to be five. And this is the first one I'm just going to show you. I have several of these in my stash. This is an athletic knit. Now you might think athletic knits are only for swimwear or leggings or active wear, but really not. You could find some lovely prints, some matte styles that aren't shiny. That could work just as well for garment sewing. I love them because they tend to have amazing drape and be a little heavier than other types of knits. So I love athletic knits. I think I buy maybe 70% of my athletic needs for dresses and clothes rather than active wear, although I do make active wear as well. So this is a mix of polyamide and elastane, 90% polyamide, 10% elastane. It's a medium weight fabric. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. And look at this stretch. This is the horizontal stretch that is going to allow the garment to fit over your body and then vertical for you to be able to move in such a fitted style. When I stretch this against my mat, I would say this has 50% stretch, so it would be perfect. The stretch is the same vertically or horizontally. It's exactly the same. And this is an amazing fabric I've used already for a fitted top and it's perfectly fine. So look for your athletic needs, just be open-minded about it and just consider using those for dresses. It always works really well. Then the other one I have here is a rayon spandex. And actually you will see one of my new Olympia dresses that I'll show you at the end in this fabric. I've got a little bit left. Rayon spandex is really easy to find in solids and in prints. I prefer sewing with rayon spandex in a print. They tend to be a little heavier than the solids. And I think the solids could be a little too thin and too flimsy, just in my opinion. So I usually go for the prints with rayon spandex. This is a light to medium weight fabric. It's got 95% rayon and 5% spandex, which gives it that stretch and recovery that we need. Look, it springs back. It doesn't just deform and stay stretched out, you know? So it's really nice, nice amount of stretch horizontally. And we also have vertical stretch, I would say in about the same proportion. So this would be perfect for a fitted bodice. You'll be really comfortable. You have a neckline that won't gape. You have a comfortable armhole if you're gonna put on sleeves where you'll be able to move. Your bodice will stretch and move along with you and it won't be uncomfortable and extra short like if you chose a fabric that didn't stretch vertically. So this is perfect. I think this is a fabric that would drape really nicely with an A-line skirt. It is something that you need to think about also if your dress style has a skirt with a little bit more volume in there. So perfect, this one. The other one is a little unconventional, but I would use it. And this is a sweater knit. This is a light to medium weight sweater knit. It's not the heaviest, you know, it, it'll be fine for a dress. It won't be too bulky. And it also has a really nice amount of stretch and recovery. It's got elastane in there. Now with this one, the stretch vertically is a little less but it is at least 20% there and that is enough. Now I'm mentioning percents here. I know these by eyeballing at this point, if I went to my cutting mat and measured the stretch, I would be spot on. That, and that's just because I've been sewing for so long. 
but just in doubt, there are so many charts that you can print from the internet. Usually patterns have a chart in there also that show you stretch from here to there for this percentage. You know, you will find a way to measure your percentages if you're not sure. But over time, you will start getting used to the fabric types and the ones that work for the styles of garments that you're sewing. So this is gorgeous. I have made dresses with a sweater knit material before. I'll show you some images here. I do have an amazing dress, beautiful sweater knit material, little mock turtleneck right there, perfect. I have used it once this winter. This winter here was very mild, the mildest one I've had here in Brazil. We've been here five years. So mild, I mean, I barely was able to get out my boots. I think I wore my coat once. That's how mild the winter is. But if you live in a colder climate and you can find a nice sweater knit that has at least 5% spandex, you will be fine to make a dress like that. This is single brush poly, very similar to double brush poly. The only difference with the double brush poly is that you'll find the velvety soft uh, texture in the wrong side and the right side. I've only found it in black. You can find these in prints, but this is amazing. This has a lot of stretch. It's very lightweight. It will drape amazingly. Really easy to handle this one. It's not too slippery. I think it's a great type of fabric. Although it's a fabric that can make you a little bit hot. So just think about your climate and what you prefer. I know that I've felt hot in this type of fabric. This is polyester, 95% polyester, 5% spandex. And although it can feel amazingly soft on the skin, it can get a little bit hot. So just, just pay attention to that. Maybe you want to reserve it for projects you make for cooler weather. You can make the Olympia dress with a long sleeve and, and use it for winter with a double brush poly for sure. One thing I would do with lightweight fabrics though, if I'm using them for a fitted bodice, is double up on the back and have two layers. I think that always feels very, very nice. It's also going to prevent the lines from your undergarments from showing. It's not a technique that's hard at all. All you do is cut out two bodice pieces, place them wrong sides together and just base them along the edge treat it as one piece and you're good to go. There are other more complex ways of doing that, but that is an easy way that you can achieve a double back. This is another fabric I would also use a double back with, and this is ITY. You know, you'll find ITY in so many types and prints. I love the fabric, really nice and cool fabric. Like when you touch it, it feels cool. The stretch is great. You have horizontal and you have vertical stretch. I have made a lot of fitted bodices using ITY and they always turn out amazing. I always double up the back. And in some of them, I've even made the whole bodice line. I've just done two bodices. I've made two bodices exactly the same and put one inside the other wrong sides together and then finished my neckline normally with a band or whatever method binding and it works a treat. So it's not too hard to line a bodice if you want to and you have the extra material. I think lining a bodice when you have a really lightweight fabric just makes your bodice transform into a medium weight fabric because you have two layers and then you get this amazing flowy skirt from the ITY in a single layer at the bottom. So it's definitely one that would work. This next fabric is a rib knit. It's amazing. This is a mix of viscose or rayon, polyester and spandex. It's got 5% spandex and it's got really nice amount of stretch and recovery and it's also got vertical stretch. I would have definitely made a dress in this fabric if I'd had enough. Now, let me show you the texture. It's very beautiful. It's so nice. My issue with rib knits is that it's really hard to find. I don't have rib knits in amounts that would suffice to cut out a dress like the Olympia dress or any other dress. I've just made tops with rib knits, but I would be happy and it would turn out really nice. What I would be careful with though is just take a little longer with the cutting to make sure you're exactly on the grain and that your ribs turn out nice and vertical and not twisted like that because you would be able to tell. <laughs> I have some fabrics here that in theory would work. It's just that I would not choose them for a style like this. The first one is cotton spandex. Now, I know maybe you have access to better cotton spandex than I do. Maybe you can access really nice prints and maybe qualities have a little bit more elastane in there. At least for me, the ones that I have access to are mainly in solids, 5% spandex, but the thing with cotton is it's super stiff. It's really stiff, so that's fine for the bodice. You could make a bodice out of cotton spandex, that's fine. There's no drape in there because it's fitted but then the skirt would just stick out like that. 
I find that cotton over time, it doesn't fare well in the wash that well. It could just lighten the color and fade and just, just not look very nice. I see cotton lycra as a more casual type of material for t-shirts, but for dresses, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I, I am not a fan of dresses out of cotton. Look, look at this. This has enough spandex. It's got 5%, it stretches vertically, it stretches a little less, but I think this would be on the minimum required for the dress to work. It's just that the style, I don't know. It would just be too casual, too stiff. I'm not a fan, but you might want to try cotton. Depends on the type of cotton that you have. At least for me, I've never ever found a cotton that I would be happy to use for a dress. I'd make a top, a sweater, whatever, but not a dress. <laughs> These next two fabrics would definitely work. They, it's not that they won't, they'll look amazing it's just about the aesthetic that you prefer so these would work for the bodice no drama but for a dress that has a little bit of volume on the skirt because these types of materials are heavier the skirt is just gonna you know it's not gonna drape close to your body it's just gonna be more dramatic and maybe it's a look that you're going for maybe it's a look that you like i know it's a look that i don't want <laughs> that's why when i choose fabric for my dresses i tend to go a little light to medium weight and just choose really nice draping fabrics. So I'll show you a scuba material I have. It's like spongy, it's not the same material that you use for wetsuits, but very similar. It's made out of neoprene basically. It does have elastane, it does stretch vertically and horizontally. I would be extremely happy to make a fitted dress with this. The dress has a straight skirt, the Tessa sheath dress, or another pattern that might have a seam at the waist, but the skirt is just straight. Perfect, I would love that for this. I'd love the scuba for that. But maybe for the Olympia dress or any other one that has a more voluminous skirt, I wouldn't be too keen, but I know it's a look. I know the skirt is beautiful to look at, it's just not what I want to wear. But consider it if you want a more dramatic skirt. Really easy to work with, really easy to sew. You don't need to worry about lining bodices here because the fabric is heavy, you'll be fine. It feels really nice and compressive on, although it's also a fabric that could get a little bit hot in there, you know? So think about that. It works, it just wouldn't be my first choice, you know? And in the same realms, we have Ponte Roma. So this is a Ponte Roma I pulled out of my collection. It's a gray. Now there are different types of Ponte Roma. I've worked with some that are made out of polyester and spandex. Oh my gosh, the, 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 the feel on the skin is just not good. You know, if you look at the price of some Ponte Romas, you'll see a huge difference also because of the quality. So I know now to stay away from Ponte Roma that is mainly made out of polyester because it's just not nice, it's very stiff. I'd rather look for Ponte that is made out of a viscose or rayon spandex blend. Some have a bit of polyamide in there, and that is the case for this one. It's a mix of polyamide, rayon, and elastane. And it's nice. It has a nice drape, as you can see. It's just a heavier fabric, which would mean that the skirt would just come out like this. The, the bodice would be fine. The stretch is 30%, I would say, here. And you also have vertical stretch. So you would be fine in the stretch department. It's just that it would just feel more compressive, I think it would feel more fitted than it is just because the fabric is heavier and it just doesn't stretch as nicely as the other ones. But I think it would work and it's something that you might wanna try. Just know that your skirt is gonna be poofing out away from your body a little bit, but it would work. Now I have some fabrics that would definitely not work and I would definitely not use. And I know a lot more in my mind. I just couldn't find any examples in my collection. But this one, this one is a cotton, 100% cotton, zero elastane in here. It is a neat fabric, the way that it's been weaved. It just doesn't have any elastane in there. And you know, this is great for loose t-shirts, you know, for things that have positive ease, that's fine. I wouldn't use this to make neckbands though because it just won't work. But look, it doesn't stretch at all. It just does not stretch. It's not even vertically, it's even worse. It's just zero. So it's basically like being a knit, but this sort of behaves like a woven fabric. So if you have any of these in your collection, it could be a blend of other things. Make sure there's elastane in your fabric. This would definitely not work for any dress that is fitted. You would be extremely uncomfortable. You would have feet issues. And you know, you might be confused because you're like, but it's a knit. It is, but it just doesn't stretch. <laughs> 
And something similar could happen with a lot of stretch velvets. So a lot of stretch velvets only have horizontal stretch, no vertical stretch. And I have this beautiful red one in my collection. So it's gorgeous. Look at all this stretch. Gorgeous, right? That is horizontal. But look at vertical, nothing. So I love this. I would make a hoodie, a sweater, just any style that isn't really closely fitting, especially around here. If I made a fitted bodice with this, it would end up shorter, super uncomfortable. This area of the armhole, because it's drafted shorter, because your fabric is meant to stretch up and down, this not being like that would mean you barely be able to move your arms, your sleeve would be super fitted here. It would just not work. I know I have a green stretch velvet in my collection. I wasn't able to find it. And it's the only one I have in my collection that actually has vertical stretch as well. So it's not that all stretch velvet won't work. You just have to go and check them. That they stretch down the selvage. Get your selvage and stretch it there. Nothing. So this is one I would definitely not use. This is a heavier type of fabric. It's sort of like a PK. Look, it has stretch. Vertically, nothing also. So this would be fine for a blazer, a knit blazer, a hoodie, a skirt, you know, something that just has some positive ease in there. Stretch woven fabrics, they're not knit fabrics. They just stretch horizontally. You know, those are not knits, and those are ones that you definitely do not want to use if you are making a dress like this. I'm just mentioning them because I've seen this comment a lot online about stretch woven. Definitely, definitely will not work for a dress like this. And there are patterns that are designed for that type of materials. You would need darts, you would need zippers, you know. It's just a whole different thing. Another fabric I really couldn't find <laughs> was stretch lace. Stretch lace sometimes stretches vertically, sometimes it doesn't. So if it stretches vertically, you might think about using that for a dress. Maybe for the Olympia dress, I wouldn't use stretch lace just because of that center front seam and how the neckline is put together. I think you would be able to see the lace inside because of the way it's finished. But if it is just a simple bodice with the front and the back on the fold, very few seams, you could use stretch lace. You would need to line it though. You need to interline and place a solid type of fabric underneath your pieces, based all around them, treat them as one, and then you could sew your dress. So think about stretch lace. <laughs> It could be possible, it would just take you extra work and you do need to make sure that it has some vertical stretch. I hope this was helpful and gave you some insight about knit fabrics and what you might want to consider when you're trying to pair your knit fabrics to a fitted bodice like the Olympia or to another dress pattern that has a similar style of bodice where it's actually smaller than your body. You do need the fabric to stretch so it can fit, so you can pull it on over your head without needing zippers and things. You know, these patterns don't have darts, you know, they rely on the fabric stretching to mold around your body to get that good fit. So I hope this helps. <laughs> I'm just glad to talk a little bit more about fabric in a more dedicated video of sorts because I tend to just talk about it for one minute in each pattern review. So there you go. This is a rayon spandex, a little heavier than others I've sewn, a little bit more structured. It's lovely, super soft, 95% rayon, 5% spandex, super stretchy, both horizontally and vertically. And you can see I did get some leaves cut in half there, but I don't really mind. You can see the facing is folded to the inside, it's integrated, and then at the back we have this short collar type construction. That little shape we had here just brings the neckline closer to the back there, so it's not gonna gape at the back. And if you've chosen well your size based on your upper bust, all this area is gonna fit really, really nicely, and you're not gonna have gaping. Armhole um, cover is really good. So you can just leave it like this as a band and I, that would give you a little bit more coverage, which is what I would always want. Or you can just take the same thing and fold it to the inside, top stitch it down and then it becomes binding. So you can choose either or, the technique is valid both ways, both are described in the pattern instructions. I just prefer the band version. There is the bodice, the skirt is just two side seams a simple twin needle hem that always works really well. This is one of my latest Olympia dresses. It's made with rayon spandex and it's a perfect fabric for a style like this with a fitted bodice, a seam at the waist and the A-line skirt. I have the original length of the bodice and the original length of the skirt. 
it's a perfect fit for me I really like this V neckline and I've chosen sleeveless version with bands you can put sleeves here and this dress could work for winter also you can see that the skirt has just the right amount of volume I really love it and that this bodice is hitting my waist really love the fit especially at the back as well both of these skirt pieces are cut on the fold so they don't disrupt this lovely print and I love this neckline that reverse short collar technique is super nice super easy to sew and you can see how to do that on the video I made for the love notions YouTube channel it's all in detail and you'll be able to sew this one for sure really enjoy this dress I think this is a style that suits a lot of people and I just feel amazing wearing something like this and I always like the sleeveless because it's hot here and I just tend to pull out my sleeveless garments much more than I pull out my sleeved garments mine is an extra large with the C cup bodice option here and I think the fit is really good This is another dress I made in testing. It's a mystery type knit. It's got slight sheen on the sort of uh, grayish material. It looks silver and it's got black. It's a type of zebra print, love it. Of course, I had to cut through the print right there. There was no way I could match that. I've also got the sleeveless option with the bands. Everything's beautiful inside. Everything's very neat. Now, because I didn't have that much fabric, I did add a center back seam to the back skirt. If you ever find yourself in that position and you really want to make your dress with that fabric, just add the center back seam. It just helps you place your pattern pieces in a way that sometimes can be more fabric friendly <laughs> than having both on the fold. And it's pretty busy at the back, you know, it's, it's not terrible to have a seam there. You just add a little bit of seam allowance there and sew it and then you just pretend it's been on the fold. That's what I've done here. And because this is a fancier dress for me, I really didn't want to have visible top stitching on the hem, so this one's been done by hand. My mom had some fun there watching a movie while she did my hem by hand, and I think it's beautiful. So you can do hems by hand with knits if you want to. It's not that you can't, you can. This is my second Olympia dress that I've just made recently. This is a more fancy version in a PK type of material. It has a really nice stretch both horizontally and vertically. Same extra large with the C cup bodice. I really love how the skirt drapes here and the fit is just great. They're both the same, they're just in different types of knits and I'm so, so happy with the result. My mum did a hand hem on this dress just to keep the look a bit more clean. You can see how the bodice fits exactly at my natural waist height, which is how it should fit in the front and the back. And just to say fabric, you can see a little sneaky seam on the back of my skirt there. I'm never sad to do that if it means I'm gonna get the dress out of the fabric when I don't have enough. I also have bands to finish the sleeveless armhole and a beautiful neckline fits beautifully. It's not too deep, it's not too high. I think it's perfect and this is a really special zebra dress. Love it.
Tell me if you've had any terrible experiences with neat fabrics. I know I did in the past. I've definitely made fitted styles with fabrics that didn't stretch vertically. And you tend to learn by experience and by making these mistakes what not to use anymore, what not to try anymore. And it's a process that can take a long time. I'm just giving you my tips. So maybe you can not make these mistakes. Maybe you've made them. Let me know below in the comments. I'll be really happy to read and reply. That's all from me today. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you again next week. Bye.